Okay, stand by everyone. Right, so very warm welcome back. Um, we're inside the last half an hour of our conversation. We're talking about women in leadership and uh, particularly in local government. And uh, we're exploring uh, the gains and progresses and some of the challenges that the councillors and uh, mayors in KwaZulu-Natal are facing. And we have an audience here uh, at the uh, Durban ICC. And uh, we're going to go through to Guguma Donsela, who's on table 49, who has a question. And I think part of which relates to what we were talking about just before the break. Uh, Gugu. Uh, my question uh, is on behalf of Women in Media, KZNSA. Uh, December 2015 is the deadline uh, for the 50-50 gender parity uh, target. Uh, the reports are showing that uh, countries, especially certain countries, are behind the target. What could be the cause behind? And what are the measures moving forward in ensuring that we do reach 50-50 gender parity. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know who wants to address that. <laughs> no, it's true. Um, we are tailing behind. Um, as I said before that, um, even with the women who are in the senior management positions in local municipalities, um, we have 28% uh, of women who are senior uh, municipal managers. Um, we have, as I said, um, and, and, and the, 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 the trend that we are now monitoring is that, for instance, if you take the ruling party, um, it will be 50-50. But as you have by-elections, mm -hmm. and as you have you know, people coming in and going, it then becomes less and less. And uh, we've been having a push now of saying, you can't replace a woman with, with the men. Mm -hmm. It's got to be because um, we do need uh, more and more women to come through and uh, participate in local government. Are there enough women or is it just that they're being overlooked? There is enough. There's more yeah, than enough more women. Than, right. The challenge is for us as women to be able to be strong, but also to support one another mm -hmm but also to skill ourselves because it is about, do you know your story? Mm -hmm. Can you stand in front of those people and provide mm -hmm. solutions to the challenges mm -hmm. that they are facing? Whatever challenges, mm -hmm. it might be challenges of lack of services, mm -hmm. it might be challenges of social ills, all those things need you to be able um, to stand up and people to be able to say, no, despite of everything, this woman can represent us and this woman can be able to do the job. Um, Councillor Mazabugo, I keep getting this tweet coming through. Mutswahe um, Rasaroe says, um, women are their own worst enemies. They have too much jealousy against each other. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, um, as a woman leader, how are you impacting the recruitment of women and getting women in? Because if this is to be believed, sometimes you get women who get a job, they're in leadership, and they shut the door on other women. Mm -hmm. How do we change that mindset if it's true? I, I don't think it's true. It, there are some cases where, when it happens, but um, there is that change. You know, in the district where we come from, uh, we've realized that if we don't work together as, as women, as women counselors, then we are doomed. So we support one another. We need to mentor. You know, local government is not a child's play. Mm -hmm. It needs people who are very strong mm -hmm. and hard workers mm -hmm. because, you, you know, there, is, there are jobs that are seven to, to, to four. Mm -hmm. But being a counselor, it's 24 hours. Sometimes you receive a call from the community in the wee hours and you have to attend to that. So for us, it is very important that we support one another and we don't allow, because usually, as Dr. Nkosa Zanazuma was saying, that it will be males who will come and influence women against other women. 
but I think there is a realization now that we need to work together to uplift one another and to complement one another. You know, I cannot be with Dr. Nkosazana, but I can complement her. Mm. I can work with her. So that is the attitude we are now taking as women. Going forward, come 2016, we will be supporting one another as female uh, as, as in our branches so that we elect women. And Tlingwe Majola says, um, how are women in leadership ensuring that procurement opportunities are accessible to women-owned businesses? And this is again what uh, Dr. Lamina Zunum was talking about. I think it was Kenya who says 30% must go to women and, and uh, youth. Are we doing that at local municipality level? Procurement and saying, look, we've got to give women businesses more of an opportunity. Yeah, Peter, I want to believe that most of the municipalities have got the policy uh, to support uh, uh, women. But what is lacking is for us to monitor if that is happening. Okay. I think that is where we, we fall short, that we are not monitoring. It's to see, to see those companies that really people who are benefiting are, are women. Okay. Bridget Bengu is on table number eight. If we can go to table number eight. Bridget, if you could stand up and we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, Bridget Bengu. Uh, my question is that, is there a plan in Cocta and Salka for us to further our education as we are at this level so that we can compete more up until we move to the administration? Mm -hmm. And lastly, I wish to commend the women leaders in front of us, especially our MEC, who able today to take us to the world to show them what we have been doing all these years in this program. We are capacitated, and now we are able to compete in the world. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, and I think we've talked about this. Education is key, isn't it? I mean, is, is there Salga local government? Are we providing the opportunity? Um, I've seen, you know, entities like uh, ESCOM pushing through a lot of their staff to MBAs and so on and so forth. And this is what it's going to take, isn't it? It's going to take women educating, mm. education and education and more education. But what is exciting about this leadership, um, of, because these councillors that are here, many of them came in 2011. Mm. From 2011, when we started the program, many women took up to go to, 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 to the university through this program. And many of them have gone to a diploma, many of them are even going to degree, and many of them, when they are not elected, they can become municipal managers because they've now been equipped with those skills, they've been inside, so they know the, the political side of things and the administrative uh, part of things. Okay, all right, table number six. Tabekile Mapumulo. Table number six, Tabekile Mapumulo. Thank you, Peter, and good morning to the viewers and my colleagues. Mine is to say we have uh, done a lot. We have developed uh, the Women's Charter, and uh, as councillors, we are saying we need to see more women coming to the leadership. And what have we done to make an impact uh, on, on our women's charter, especially in rural area, and what strategies maybe that we can use to make sure that uh, women are more developed and are more effective in leadership. Thank you. Okay, so charters are great, plans are great, strategies fantastic, but it's getting it done, isn't it, that really is where the story gets told. How, how are we doing that? Well, um, I think it, it, it's going to take each and every one of us to ensure that we commit because you find that sometimes this government is providing a lot of opportunities, but there's not many takers of those opportunities. But also it's going to take women in leadership 
these women in this room, all of us, to expose other women to the opportunities that are available. Because the fact that you are already there in the decision-making um, uh, you know, body, you then need to ensure that you use that space to empower more women, to bring in more women, but also to make even male counterpart understand why is it important for us to empower each other. You know, you can imagine that when there are public protests, for instance, yeah, you are a women counselor, and you've got to stand in front of those people and explain to them or communicate to them about maybe something which is a miscommunication. So as we move towards the elections, you're going to see more and more faction. But our point is that we need to be strong as women, but particularly these are here, those that are here, because they've experienced the pressure, they've had the pain, they've been through a lot. Um, when we are here in the seminars, we always say we're coming here to retool ourselves, but to refresh ourselves so that when we go out after these two days, we're not the same as when we came in. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dlamini Zuma, we, we touched on agriculture a little bit earlier on, and, and I know that um, I think as much as 70% of the agricultural activity on the continent is in the hands of women in one form or another. And I wonder if you could just share with us how technology uh, can be employed to empower women and that maybe there's a lesson learned. Because I think I saw something at the AU recently where technology was uh, uh, playing a part uh, in, in, in modernizing uh, agriculture for women. Yes, it's true. 75% of people mm. who work in agriculture on the entire continent are women. And they make, they subsist on the land. Mm. But they are not able to make that land productive to the extent where they can be comfortably looking after themselves and their families. Partly because they are using very antiquated technology. We also see an average of about 50, 55 years in agriculture. We don't see young people coming into agriculture. Mm -hmm. And it's also for that reason, because agriculture is seen as intonje yo koko, um, because they are the ones who are using ikubaleli, el pulum kol. And it, 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 you can't go far with that. Even if you are trying to plow your field with that, the, the, the roots can't go deep, because it can't go deep. You spend a lot of time on a, on a small piece of land. So we are advocating that we need to bring in technology into agriculture. We, we know people always talk about tractors only, and not every woman can have a tractor. But now there, there, there are technologies that are used in the world. They are called tillers or cultivators, which are small, but they use a little bit of diesel, and you can plow in a short space of time, big parts, and it's better on your health. But also, agriculture should now be seen not as a subsistence, but as a business as well. Mm -hmm. So that there are small uh, cottage industries or family industries where processing can take place. I was looking the other day at a, a plant called hemp, which does everything. So you can, you can grow it, then you can extract oil from it, and you can still sell the oil and get more revenue, but also whatever has come out the seeds are good source of food, and they also are used in, 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 in making cloth, it's used in mm. industry, in building. So there, there are lots of things that you can do. Women can grow tomatoes, but it's not enough. They must grow tomatoes, and there must be a small factory 
that processes those tomatoes into juice, into tomato paste, and that is what will create jobs. Because if we just grow everything and send it out raw, we are sending it out with the jobs for processing it. So it's important that we empower women with technology, but also with finance, access to finance and markets okay. and agro-processing and agro-industry. That is what will move this continent quickly because there is land, there is water, the there is the sun. <laughs> there are people mm. who need the food and we are a growing population, so we should be looking at how we are going to feed. You know how much we import food in the mm. continent? Mm. 83% of what we eat on the continent mm. is imported. Wow. It's a scandal wow. when we have all what wow. it takes to produce food. And we must introduce irrigation. We can do a lot, aquaculture, growing fish, there is a lot that can be done okay. and that should be done. And that's why we started at the summit by saying to the heads of state, we want them to take, get this handheld tool into the museum and bring technology. Mm -hmm. So we brought at least one tiller for every country just to show them that it, it can, can be, be done. done. Wow. Okay. Wonderful story. Um, NEC, the other hat you wear is of uh, traditional affairs. And I'm just wondering, because we live in a patriarchal society, there's a lot of cultural drama that plays out that's holding women back. How are the traditional leaders helping you to change that uh, so that women can step up and want to be counselors and want to lead? Well, we, we work very well with traditional uh, leaders. Um, in fact, I think um, the, the last speaker um, who contributed mm -hmm. from your questions, um, uh, she is the mayor of uh, one of the municipality mm -hmm. around Mkungudlovu um, district in Mkambatini. She was also an a, 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 a Inkosi, um, holding in for, for, for his son for her son, uh, who's now has taken over. Um, so we work very well with uh, Amakosi. Even, um, you know, we have a historical um, issue, uh, particularly in, in KwaZulu-Natal, but also as Africans, that women are respected more um, by our traditional system. What it needs is for us to be able to respect one another um, to be able to understand that we are equals, mm -hmm. to be able as well to reach out and deal with those, um, you know, uh, misconceptions and um, the patterns that we see previously. But my experience is that we also getting Amakosi more and more getting younger um, because mm -hmm. they're taking over um, from their families or, uh, you know, from their fathers um, when they deceased. And, and therefore, the agenda even there has changed. We have a program right now where, uh, with the University of KwaZulu-Natal where uh, Amakose are going through. Others are now in masters. And they are being taught even there about governance. They're being taught in there about having uh, projects um, that they can start in their particular area. They do even assignments. We say, do an assignment. Um, in this area and tell us what kind of local economic development you can have. So we are uh, really progressing in terms of making Amakosi to be part of the democratic dispensation. Okay. Or right. Table 26, we'll find Edna and Changas. Table number 26, Edna and Changas. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Uh, I would like to know, as women councillors, we are always undermined in our municipalities. You can raise a point in the municipality, which is very serious, but you can see that the male councillors are just crushing it out. 
And secondly, uh, as in KZN, we have got a lot of uh, local municipalities, but you find that the mayors, speakers, uh, deputy mayors are very few in, my, in numbers, and we are the people who are many as women in this country. So I would like to know how are we going to overcome the power from the males? Thank you. All right. So and it, it sounds like it's something that resonates. Didn't get the question. They're being the female councillors are being undermined by their male counterparts. And, you know, I want to put that to you as well because you're in leadership and you've had to overcome some of this, actually, to get where you are. And so you've seen it. How does she get empowered so that her point, which is nurturing, which is humane, which is caring, is taken seriously? Uh, Peter, I said earlier on, you, you need, when, when you go to a meeting, you cannot go to a council meeting without reading an agenda. Mm. Because one, when you get there, you're not going to make any meaningful contribution. And then you will get undermined. But if you prepare yourself, you are able to argue. Some of, 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 of undermining that we see there is done by ourselves. Because if the male counterpart has prepared, then they know that Councillor Sorenso mm. does not uh, prepare herself when uh, she goes to a meeting. Mm. And then the undermining will start. MEC, I get a sense also that maybe there's something about confidence here. Because you're a confident woman, I can see that. Mm. And so you will be able to command attention. But I, I get a sense that sometimes the women... I don't know whether it's, it's a cultural thing. To, I don't know. But how do we instill that confidence where you say, hang on, I am speaking. I've got a point to say. Mm -hmm. Even if they're prepared, they can be bullied. And I get a sense that mm. maybe that might be happening. No, it's, it's definitely true um, that um, there has been that, uh, the culture of undermining women. Um, this is uh, the same reason that we think it's important for women to come together and learn among themselves because there are those who have said the sky is not the limit. They've been able to break that ceiling that is, you know, confining them um, to not being heard or not um, participating. Um, for instance, I've had to intervene in many cases where you find that female counsellors are not part of delegations. You would have a delegation that is going to a workshop or to conferences or flying overseas, but it's only male. And, and as, as Dudu was saying, it will take all of us as women role models because the fact that we are all here, it means that we are already in the positions of power. And how do we then be able to speak in those council chambers to speak for women, but also to be confident enough. But you cannot be confident if you're not educated. Mm -hmm. That is why for us, this training program then, which has got certificate, the diploma, is going to ma make sure that it makes our women to be confident um, uh, you know, for themselves, but also to speak confidently on issues of governance, clean governance, good governance, efficiency, in the way we are doing things, and effectiveness, because those are the areas at local government in terms of our back to basic, we are trying to concentrate on and focus. All right, here's an interesting... Maybe, Peter, yeah. let me also add this angle, that when, when you are a leader, you, you still need to have mentors. Mm. I, I have my mentors that I will consult now and again, but if, because I want to grow. So that is what we also need to do. Mm. Besides being, having education and all, you need to have mentors, people who will help you to grow up and to have self-confidence. You cannot just have self-confidence overnight. It's something mm. that needs to grow with you. Because sometimes, you know, standing up there and talking to these male counter counterparts yeah. intimidates you. So mm. we do need to have people that will help us to grow to be better people. All right, you know, we've run out of time, unfortunately, but 
30 seconds each, just your final thought that you want to leave uh, with the women here and also at home watching, not just in South Africa, but across the continent. 30 second comment. Well, for me is that uh, as women, we can do it. Mm. We are capable. We have been made um, to be able to withstand whatever situation. And I always say to um, the women that we're going to be talking uh, to later, that when you fall, you don't fall, but you must roll, so that you are able to stand up again, dust yourself, and get back there. Okay, wonderful. Um, Dr. Hassan Adwamini Zuma? Well, for me, women are as good as anyone. They just need to gain their confidence and focus on something. If you want something, you must think about it because you can't do something you've never thought about. Mm -hmm. And then focus on getting it and work with other women, work with other people who can help you, but you must be focused and disciplined mm -hmm. and hardworking. Okay. And uh, Councillor Dudumas Bulgo. One of the things that I've learned recently is putting aside emotions. Mm -hmm so that you are able to focus. Okay. Let us unite as women and move forward. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ms. Nomusa Dube Ngube, Dr. Nkosasa Nadlamini Zuma, the chairperson of the African Union Commission and uh, much loved by the delegates here, want you for president as well, <laughs> and the councillor Dudu Mazubuga, the uh, mayor of Otugele District Municipality. Thank you very much indeed, ladies, for sharing your thoughts with us, and we wish you the very best. Thank you very much indeed. And to you at home, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. Thank you for your tweets and your interest. And uh, please inspire each other, particularly our young women. Uh, local government is a career, and this is where you can make a lot of impact, a lot of change. And so please, let's encourage our women to get more involved and let's support them once they're in there. Okay, have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you at the next one, which we're looking at every cities. That's going to be exciting. That's on the 16th. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.